Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to our witnesses for providing your expertise today. Today we're discussing the Municipal Liquidity Facility. This continues to be a heated topic on Capitol Hill as state and local municipalities determine how best to balance their budgets and fight COVID-19. Last week in the House Financial Services Committee, we held a hearing precisely on this issue. This challenge varies widely across the nation. During the hearing last week, I highlighted the number of COVID cases per state does not correlate with how an individual state's economy is actually faring. For example, Arkansas and New York are ranked very similar in the number of COVID-19 cases per capita, but sales tax revenue in my home state of Arkansas is up substantially while down in New York. I will discuss this in more detail. Ultimately, we need to ensure that our communities can reopen in a safe and secure manner and rebuild our great economy that we experienced at the beginning of this fateful year. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I yield back. Um, I do want to talk about another challenge to smaller st states, and that's the use of entities to issue uh, debt to participate in the MLF and then uh, support lower subdivisions in their state. In my home state, we have the Arkansas Development Finance Authority, ADFA, is the exclusive issuer of bonds for state agencies, and therefore they're typically uh, acted as a conduit. Is it the Fed's intention to let these sorts of conduit issuers have access to the program? Congressman, I'm familiar with ADFA. I used to work with them a little bit when I was an investment banker. Um, the program is designed um, initially to deal with state and local governments and their instrumentalities, generally essential service public providers. Um, we broadened uh, the definition, as you noted, to allow governors to select up to two revenue bond issuers. The only limitation on the revenue bond issuer is that um, it has to be financing governmentally owned uh, assets. So it's consistent with the uh, state and local government where it's consistent with the MLF objectives. So for example, ATPA probably issues a lot of private activity bonds. Those would not be eligible. But to the extent that ADFA issues um, uh, bonds for governmentally owned entities and they have a credit worthy revenue stream, uh, they may be eligible for the program. We'd be glad to talk to you about the specifics that you have in mind to determine whether in fact um, that, that entity would have direct access. I think it depends on what that entity is financing for them. I understand. So. Well, I think that's a point of education in our states where you have a, a facility such as an arena that uh, does not have business now due to the tourism impact and in some states government shutdowns and therefore uh, they are a public facility sometimes operated by a county sometimes operate, operated by a facilities board but they're not typically a bond issuer and that's why i raise it is that something that you think might work under a conduit like an adfa bond issuer it may be able to um and also of course uh, the state or uh, Little Rock, for example, could borrow on behalf of one of these arenas or entities um, pursuant to the downstreaming provisions of the original uh, MLF design. Right. I thank you for your testimony today. Appreciate your participation with our commission, and I yield back, Madam Chair.